This should be an exciting step in our assembly journey. We're going to do the Hello World program finally. First, we learn how to move data into registers, put data into RAM, and now we can use those pieces together to create our Hello World program. If this is your first time joining me, go to x64.halb.it. It's totally free, totally online. Click launch the app, and then we're going to choose our GNU assembler right here, and we're going to load the first example, GNU, delete everything up until start, and then delete the comment. So what we want to do here is output to this box right here, the terminal, just like we would in any other language. And if we use C, for example, this might look something like printf hello world. We've all seen a statement like this before. So let's break this apart and see how we do this in assembly. The hello world itself is going to go into the data segment. This is going to be a string literal just goes into the data segment of RAM that we can then call later on using its address. As for the rest of printf, what it actually does is at the end of the day, it's going to talk to the kernel or the operating system. It's going to make a system call. It's really cool, very low level. So printf, the first thing it does is it formats a string. We don't need to do that. Our string is going to be ready to go. Next, we need to tell the kernel what we want to do because the system call itself, the the kernel, there's hundreds of kernel calls that we can make. So we need to tell it that we want to write. Then we need to tell the kernel where we want to write to. Then we need to tell the kernel, well, what are we printing? What are we writing here? And in this case, it's going to be the address of our string. And then finally, we need to tell the kernel, how many bytes do we want to write? So it's going to go to that address. And then it's going to ask us how many bytes do we want to pull from this location that we've sent it. So in the end, if this was in C, it might look like system call, and then write is the first argument, we want to write to the terminal, second argument, 402000 is our address of hello world, let's say in this example, and then hello world itself, the way I have it written here is 13 bytes long 13 characters. So this is conceptually what we want to do here. But this suggests that we're going to make a function call and then pass in arguments. But really, at the low level, it's backwards, we're going to populate arguments first, then perform system calls. So I'm going to give you one guess as to where we're going to put these arguments, you're most likely going to say in registers, you can put the data into the registers, then perform the system call, the Linux kernel has a very specific order of how it wants that data to be written. So first is going to be the system call code, and the kernel expects this to be an array any other arguments are going to go in the same order always. Now, when you're the assembly programmer, you can do whatever you want. But since we're talking to the kernel, we have to use a register order that it's expecting. Otherwise, it just won't be able to make sense of what we want. So the first argument always goes in RDI. Second argument goes in RSI. Third argument in RDX, RCX, R8, and R9. And then after that, it goes in the stack, but we'll get there later on. We don't need to use all these registers. We don't have that many pieces of data. We want to write syscall effectively, write terminal our address and then the length, right? So a distinction to make, this is the argument order that's used for everything. But syscall is special because the first code goes in RAX, which is just the service that we want to take. So this is technically the start of the arguments. So in reality, and you can do this and see it would be called write would be the function itself. And then we'd have terminal address and the length for assembly, we have only one instruction syscall. So we're forced to pass in well, what function are we talking about? And that's why this rex is snuck in there. But for any other function, you're just going to use it starting at RDI like this. So let's get started here, we have to fill these in the syscall for write the register rex is expecting code one. So we could just put that in to move to rex one. And this is going to be syscall write. then we know in RDI, we want to put the terminal. Well, how do we tell it that we want to write to the terminal? It's another one here. And this is technically, it's called standard out. So we're telling the kernel that we want to write to the standard output, which in this case, the terminal is going to pick up that data. Now what we want to do is tell it the address of what we want to write. Now we don't have it in memory yet. So hello string, let's say dot byte. And then we can put h e l l Oh, but this is very tedious, of course. So they actually have shorter ways of doing that. I'm just illustrating to you that each letter is really just a byte and you could spell it out this way. So why don't we leave it as hello and then we'll get to hello world in just a second. So we have our data here at hello string. So now we can load the address of hello string, right, which is technically this first entries address. So we want to write which we have right here to the terminal, we have RDI, and then we want the address, the next register in the order is RSI. So we're going to load effective address to RSI. And we're going to put hello string, which will be this H right here, right, the start of the string that we've put in. And then what we want to do is tell it what's the length of what we want to print. So if we count this one, two, three, four, five, it's five. So we can move to and the next one in the list here is RDX, and we're going to put five. So now we've set our arguments, we've filled all this data in. And now we can pull the trigger on syscall. 
So if we put syscall here, then this should work. So we compile it and let's step through. We see RAX is populated, RDI populated. We load our address and it does indeed seem to be 402000. Five is our length. And now next instruction here, we're going to make that syscall. So let's step and we see at the bottom, hello popped out. So we printed hello uh, in a very manual sort of way. So let's clean this up a bit, make it a little more efficient. So the much easier way of doing this is to put dot ASCII and then you can put hello world, which is what I wanted to put originally. And what this is going to do is the same exact thing that, that we just had. So it's good to see it that way. It's just going to put these in as individual bytes. There's nothing funky going on here. And then what if we don't want to have to count this and write it in manually every time we can actually calculate it here. So let's put hello len. And then instead of a colon here, we're going to put an equal sign. And then we're going to put a period. And then we're going to put minus hello string. And what's happening here, it looks a little cryptic, but what this is saying is the position that we're in now. So in other words, at the end of the string, we want to subtract the memory address of hello string from the end of it. <clears throat> so it's going to take the end of the string, subtract the beginning or whatever tag. In this case, our tag is the beginning of the string, the H, and it's going to give us our length. And then what we can do now is we can load that variable. This is really just like an assembly time value. So we can load it into RDX hello len. And if we compile this, then we should be able to step through and see it pop up at the bottom. Hello world. So we didn't have to manually count this to the 13th character like what we had before. And let's also just highlight that if we manually put in a shorter value here like three, it's only going to print three. So H E L. And if I click continue, you'll see H E L has printed here. And now this brings us to our pesky error that we've had for a long time. If you've seen the previous videos, I've had this error and I've promised that we're going to deal with it and we are going to deal with it right now. So what's happening here is we run through our code that we've written, but then the program continues even though we haven't written any more code past this point, the program just goes downwards into this empty memory region. And the kernel, the operating system sees us doing that. And it gives us a segmentation violation saying, hey, you're accessing memory that you're not supposed to. And it shuts us down. We didn't tell the operating system that we want to shut down the program. Really, what we want to do is we want to exit the program. We want to tell the operating system that we want to exit. So I'll go back to the list. And by the way, it's, this is Filippo Valsorda's site, really useful and very easy to use. So very simply, the code that we want is exit. We want to tell the operating system that we want to exit the program. So we put a 60 into RAX, and then we should be able to make another system call. So let's move to RAX the value of 60 and make a system call and, and see what happens. So if we click continue, now we see we don't have the error message anymore, but we do have program terminated with exit one. So the exit code is just a way to tell the operating system how our program exited. Was there a problem? Was there some catastrophic error? Was the computer going to catch on fire, right? So you can use different codes, uh, 0 to 255, I believe, to tell the operating system or the program that opened yours, what happened during the run. If your program finished under normal conditions, you're going to pass a zero. So we're passing a one here because RDI, if we run this again, then after we finish outputting our hell, which should be hello world, I should put this back, then we can see that we're going to move to RAX the value of 60, which is 3C in hex. But RDI still has that value of one that we moved here. So really what we'd want to do is move to RDI the value of zero, or we could use a slightly better better idiom, which is to XOR RDI against itself, which will just zero it out exclusive or just good to start adding some of these things in. So if we compile and run this, then we do get our hello world. And we have a very beautiful program terminated with exit zero. This is exactly what we want to see. We've gotten rid of our error message. And now we're properly exiting our program, we're doing everything that we want to do. And then we exit the program. All right, so it's challenge time. And the challenge that I have in mind is to output two strings to the terminal and then exit with a code 99. And then after that, exit with a code zero. And this is all just to make sure that we remember the order of the registers and how to perform the system calls. So if you want to pause now, go ahead and do it from scratch. Uh, try and do it from memory. If you can choose whatever strings you want. And if you need a reminder of the register order, we put the system call code in RAX. After that, our arguments go into RDI, RSI, RDX, RCX, R8, and R9. So give it a shot. I'll go through it right after. So first we need to have our strings. I'm going to choose two strings here. I'm going to call the first one s1.ascii hello world. And then s2, I'm going to put you big beautiful world. So to capture the length of this, I'm going to put s1 len equals and put the period so we are at the end of world right after the exclamation mark. And we'll put minus s1 and then s2 len we're going to put period our current location minus s2. So we capture all this data and we count it. And then what we can do is we can start building our, our function here. So rex, we need to put the value of one. This is for this call, right? Then we need to put into RDI the value of one. And this is standard output. 
terminal, you could say. And then we need to put our string into RSI or the start of our string, the character pointer is technically what this would be. So that's S1 here into RSI. And then we need to load our assembly time variable, which is S1 len into RDX for the length of our data. And then of course we need to make a syscall. So if we step through this, then we do have hello world come out here very nicely. And then what we need to do at this point is just duplicate this entire thing. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to put this into a function that we can call. But for now, let us repeat it. So after that call, RDI is still one. However, REX has changed because the system call is actually returning a value to us. So basically, we just have to reset it back to one. So we're going to move one to REX. And we see that RDI hasn't changed here. But I'm going to just redundantly put a one again. And then we can load S2 and we can load S2 len and perform another system call. So if we run this, then we do get our error message that we'll deal with again. But we get hello world, you big beautiful world. Now there's no space between them. Uh, I want to add a line break. So I'm going to put slash n. So if we run this again, we do have hello world, you big beautiful world. And then now we just need to exit the program and that's exit code 60. And I wanted to put error code 99. So let's run this and see if we get 99. So we get hello world, you big beautiful world. And we do get exit 99 here. And then ultimately we want to to be zero because our program ended properly, no surprises. So everybody knows our program was a success. This is very redundant here. And really what we want to do is have a print function, right? Print. And then we'd move this in, sort of, we need to modify some stuff. And we'd want to be able to call print twice, right? Passing an argument. So it can print dynamically, we could pass in S1 first, and then S2. And that's what we're going to do in the next video, we're going to look at the jump command, which is how we control where the CPU actually loads code from and we can jump around our, our memory and execute different functions. So it's going to be a really big step because after that, we can actually build real programs that do things because right now, we're sort of stuck going straight down forever. And the CPU needs to intelligently jump around into different functions. So that's what we're going to do next. So thanks very much for joining me. I hope this is useful for you. And I hope that you're having fun getting into assembly. Thank you very much for watching. And I will see you soon.